Hello everyone, today I am with Mark Harmon and we are going to talk about everything video today and as a funny opener I thought it'd be great if we found out what video is Mark sending into you being framed? Oh, so this is a good question. Uh, this is something I had to think hard about uh, the other day. So I was filming probably two weeks ago uh, and the cameras were still rolling and um, I was sort of moving some lights around and I didn't realize that my lanyard from my keys was hanging out my pocket. I uh, tripped over that, head first, knocked the light over and like smashed into the wall and the client was just standing there like, and then she was like, are, are you all right? Like, yeah, fine, fine. Um, so yeah, don't leave that hanging out your pocket because it's potentially embarrassing and potentially um, life-threatening as well. Cool, excellent. You could have earned 250 quid there. Plus, you've given us all a health and safety tip, so win-win. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> excellent, right, let's get on to the serious stuff. And what's your story that's brought you to this stage in your career? So I first started making films in sort of 2007. Um, this is with my friend Jake from school. So we were told to make like a PowerPoint presentation about a poem we were making, uh, about a poem that we were reading for A-level English. And we just thought, oh, we'll make a video instead. Um, so we made like a number of videos from that one onwards. So into the summer, we were making um, various um, films and stuff like that. Uh, and then over the summer, um, I was sort of due to go to university in the September uh, and I was going to do drama and education. And over the summer, I sort of realized I really enjoyed making these films. So like about a week before I was due to start university, um, I just sort of rang the university and asked if I could change my course uh, and change it to film. Uh, and they said, yeah, that's fine. It's really weird how easy that is to do that. <laughs> yeah. They've got your money, they don't really care what course yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just make sure you turn up a few times and yeah, yeah that's fine. But uh, yeah, I went to university and I made film. Like, I, I did film there uh, and made like, loads of films. Most of the films I made were sort of off um, on my own rather than for my course, uh, which was, the, they were probably the more fun ones, but then I did make some good ones for my course as well, which were quite enjoyable. And then after university, I thought, oh, I'll just walk into a job. I've got a degree now, which is what everyone tells you when you go to university or you're just yep. into a job. And what you don't, don't really know is that it's really, really hard to find a job after university because everyone's, <laughs> everyone's got a degree you don't stand out um so the way i stood out was i think oh, i'll make my own work so i started off doing like wedding videography um started doing just sort of random videos for businesses and people i met at networking and things like that um that was in 2011 it's now 2019 um yeah, nearly 2020 uh, and sort of haven't really stopped since 2011. So I thought initially I'll just do it to get some experience and then I'll get, get a job. Um, but it's gone pretty well. So yeah, it's like eight years. <laughs> That's cool. So, so when, you, when you first started back in 2007, what were you making the videos on? Ah, so that's a, re that's a good question. So um, my dad had a camera that he um, used to take photos of road traffic accidents. <laughs> it, it Sorry, that's not funny. It's, not, it's just the way yeah. you said it. It was his job. <laughs> he's, he's like an insurance sur surveyor. So uh, he would like take photos of the accidents and the roads and stuff like that. Um, I sort of went into his office because he had a home office and I just sort of took his camera. Um, okay. And then me and my friend went and made this film. Um, and like, it was a really rubbish camera. So the, the SD card was like, I don't think it was an SD card, but it was a thing before SD cards. So we had to shoot like a minute of footage or however long of footage and then upload it and then shoot the next bit of footage. Um, and then my friend invested in like a D little mini DV camera and then I bought my own mini D cam DV camera and then we went to university uh, and there was like loads of uh, like decent cameras that we could use there. But yeah, the first one was like a little one that was just for photographs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I had like no memory or no anything like that one. But yeah, uh, it, 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 it's mad to think now. I remember when, and and please don't judge me on this, but I remember when Big Brother started, and they they looked for applications, uh, and you had to send a video in of yourself, and but I, I I quite fancied it as a bit of an experiment, but it was always a case of I don't know anyone with a video camera, or I can't be bothered getting the camera, putting it on VHS or whatever it was at the time, and and doing it that way. Whereas now you think about it, it's crazy. 
what big brother did you ask, did you want to go on like how, how early was it just, it was, just so it i know was, sort of what level yeah yeah it was the second one so oh, it, okay it, so that's like that's, that's still normal people on it yeah yeah when it when it was literally people got into it because they sounded interesting not because they were idiots and they wanted to be famous yeah i think like by big brother three there was a guy that left really early on because i think he was quite normal and everyone else was really weird yeah. So I think he climbed over the fence and that was like... Yeah, I, I remember his name as well. Sandy, was it? Yeah, it was Sandy. Yeah, yeah I'm glad you said that as well. <laughs> right, okay, quickly, let's, let's, let's move, move on before people start judging us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that was your backstory. So what, what do you do now? So now I create um, regular content for businesses. So I create shows for businesses. So what we do like people come here once a month or I go to them once a month and we shoot a number of videos. So episodes for them uh, to post out on social media and on their website. So basically it's to get people to their website to sort of subscribe to their email lists and things like that. So they can build uh, relationships with people over an amount of time. So we're creating episodic content regularly um, rather than just sort of one off stuff, which is what I was doing when I first started. It was just sort of, Oh, make a video, make a video, make a video. Um, and then move on to the next person, move on to the next person. And now it's sort of stick with the same people and build their brand through this sort of episodic content. Yeah, that sounds cool. I like, I like the idea of it, it being episodic as well, rather than just a, a one-off thing, which mm. traditionally probably people saw videos as much more of that. Get something on your website, uh, an intro video, and that's it, done. Yeah. So what are the benefits of creating video content then? So I think there's so many, but the main one I think is that people get to know who you are. So they get, they, they might not meet you in person or they might meet you in person one point, but they'll get to know you because you're posting these videos, these videos regularly. So that when, if you do meet them in person, they'll feel like they know you and you might not have heard from them. You might not have seen them at all, or you might not have seen them since the first time you met them, but because they've been taking in all your content, they'll feel like they, they know who you are and they'll approach you as if they know who you are. And I think that's like, when that happens, that's like really quite, it's going to sound really like corny, but really quite magical. <laughs> it's really, it's really cool when that does happen. It's happened to me a couple of times. It's happened to people I've worked with a few times. Um, and like they feed that back to me and it's like, oh yeah, that, that, you know, it's working when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really good to know. And I suppose, mm -hmm big advocate of that simply because that's sort of how I got to know yourself via LinkedIn and, and the videos you yeah, produced exactly. there. I, I don't think we'd be talking if you weren't producing the, those videos. Yeah, exactly. No, we wouldn't at all. So how easy is it to create original content and how hard is it once you, you, you start creating that original content to produce it on a regular basis? So yeah, it's relatively easy to start. You, you don't need a lot. Like I think, you can just start with your phone, but I would recommend like you could start with your phone, but then I would recommend building your, um, the, the equipment you've got from there. So improving it from your phone to maybe getting a better camera, getting better lighting, get a better sound equipment to the point where you're, where it looks really, really good. I would, I'd be an, I'd be an advocate of that. Um, like I do watch people's videos on their phones, but the most of the content I watch is like, you can tell they put effort into making it look good. And I, I do enjoy watching that. I don't know if that's just because I make videos myself that I enjoy watching people's videos when they put effort into making it. But I think if you're, you're, you're making a concerted effort to improve how you're doing it every time, then you're always going to be sort of striving to improve, not, not just your videos, but sort of every, every other sort of department of your business as well. So I'm always sort of wary of, when things are getting a bit stale and now I want to change things up uh, and make things better. So I'm always thinking like, how can I improve it? How can I improve it? How can I improve it? Um, and then the next part of that question, how hard is it to produce regular video content? It is really, really hard. So I've made just, I've just made 200, 265th episode of my show. Um, and it is a big commitment. That's, that's, that, is, that is years of work that's gone into that. Um, you've got to start somewhere so it's hard to get started but it's harder i think to keep going so i'm not done after 265 like i've got an aim to get to a thousand and then i'll probably have an aim to get to two thousand three thousand yeah. and just keep going and going and going and going and i'll change up how i do things i'll change how i shoot how i um 
the cool stuff, how I present stuff. I just always want to improve it. And the same goes with the people that I'm, I work with as well. Like I just want to improve how they, the results they get, how they shoot it, how it looks. Always look to sort of uh, improve it. And that is hard to do. So you've always got to sort of think about it um, in a, what's the word? I, I suppose you've got to, to look at it because th there's the danger that what's working for you would work, wouldn't work for other people, but you know how to do that. And if you've got say five or six clients, it, the easiest thing to do would be to just to replicate every yeah. single thing you do for everyone, but everyone's different and everyone's got a different market. So for you, I suppose the trick is to, it will just be different every single time for, for but with that consistency for each client. Yeah, exactly. For, so, so for example, my stuff works quite well on LinkedIn, but I'm work with, working with someone who is targeting um, people over 50 um, who, um, like, who are looking for sort of care homes for, or like regular care for their parents. So their parents are sort of 80 plus. Um, and they're not going to be on LinkedIn. Like they might not be on, they're probably not going to be on LinkedIn. Um, so we're running sort of Facebook ads and stuff off the back of that. So it's totally different from how my videos would work. Okay. So the best you just mentioned there, LinkedIn is, yeah. is where you really uh, get, get some, some traction for one of a, a, coin, a, a corny phrase for, for putting your videos online. But is there a particular platform that works best for videos? Um, or is it all different dependent on the business? It is really different depending on the business. Um, like the obvious one that stands out to everyone is YouTube, but like I think it has its, its up, upsides and downsides. Um, like gone are the days where you could just sort of post a video on YouTube and it would get like a few hundred, maybe a few thousand views. Like if you just posted a video on YouTube and didn't know, had put no effort into the description keywords or posting videos regularly, you'd probably get under 10 views. Mm. Uh, on that so if you're going to do youtube you've got to do it properly um linkedin i've put um like it's good for businesses and, and posting regular content so that's how we we got in touch um sort of through that regular content mm -hmm. um and sort of giving tips uh, somebody in the office yesterday was saying about oh i hate linkedin because it's so salesy <laughs> and that's like totally the opposite of what i want to be on linkedin and it's just sort of i just want to be giving people ideas giving value building relationships um, I'm not really selling anything. It's sort of maybe getting people across to my website so they can subscribe to my email list and then growing that relationship from there. Um, I'm trying not to be salesy on LinkedIn. And I've put yeah. Wistia as well. So Wistia is a place where you can host your videos and then sort of embed them on your website or embed them on landing pages and places like that. So you could, you used to be able to do that with YouTube and there would be sort of no ads or no suggested videos playing at the end. But now YouTube's turned that off, so you can't sort of embed a video on your website about suggested videos at the end. So Wistia is a good way around that, where you can um, post your video on your website, and it's literally, that's all it's for. It's just for your website, and there's great analytics on the back of that. Um, it is quite expensive for that, but there are alternatives to Wistia as well. So there's things like Vimeo and Vimeo Pro and stuff like that. Where that's, that's cool. It's good for embedding. It, it, it's, all, it's always good to have those options as well. Um, mm. because I think a lot of people just think this, or, or I, I, what I always find is that regardless who, whoever you speak to, they've always got one little tip, trick, platform, software that you don't know about. And, and yeah. you're like, how did I not know about this? Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> and, um, I, I interviewed a, a guy from Wistia called Phil Nottingham, okay. um, way, way back and that. That was really interesting to find yeah. out a bit more about the platform and everything like that. Cause I'd never heard of it until then. Hmm. Uh, anyway okay uh, moving on so on your actual website you talk about video content and repurposing it how and why do we do this so how you do it um so the way i suggest doing it is taking like your your video say where you're answering a question um and then you can i'd send that to a website called rev.com loads of people are talking about it now but that's that takes your video and gives you subtitle files it gives you a transcription of your your um your video as well and then you can take that transcription um so you use the subtitles to put on your video i take the transcription i send that off to somebody in south africa who turns that into a blog so he just repurposes that into a written blog that then i post on linkedin on my and on my website 
Uh, then I also have the option to cut down the video. So say if the video is three minutes long and it's got maybe three or four different points that I cover, I can cut that into three or four different other little clip videos as well that I can put across on other bits of social media as well. Uh, and then you can, like say the video is sort of three minutes long. I can take the audio of that and put that on as a podcast and sort of slightly repurpose that as a podcast. So the way you're doing this here, we're shooting it as a video, but you're also using it as a podcast as well. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I do that is because it just saves a hell of a lot of time from writing a blog that's sort of about my video um, that's taking that's recording a podcast after shooting the video um, or making all these other three, three or four little videos as well. I've got one video and I can turn that into loads of bits of content. Um, so I was talking at an event last week and I was saying like, if you're at an event, there's loads of opportunities to interview people and things like that. So you can get loads of videos from that and then repurpose those into other like hundreds of bits of content from just one day of mm. filming. And uh, it's like any type of content. I think there's, there's content absolutely everywhere. It's just a case of trying to find it. And that's something I'm massively learning. It's like, I've got so many presentations, documents and information and, and in them, there's probably about 10 or 15 pieces of content that, that are right there in front of my face that I wouldn't even consider. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> it's mad really, isn't it? And, and like you said, if, yeah. if you go to a show or something like that, it's, it, you, you can talk to somebody, chat to somebody, um, you know, just photography, whatever it is. And it's a whole day's worth of content. And I suppose it's thinking a bit smarter about it as well in terms of bulking on that content and then breaking it down and repurposing it. Yeah. That itself does take time, but mm. it's a lot, a lot less time than if you were to make all those bits of content from scratch. So. Yeah. So the, we've mentioned it a few times and, and you're saying you release your videos on, on LinkedIn through the, the video show, which I see is your way of producing content, helpful uh, content. And it definitely is helpful. And I love the way you engage with the audience. And, and again, that's partly why we're talking now because it was really engaging and you were asking people for assistance, even in creating your content, which produced content in itself. Um, but I think I pretty much answered that question for you, but why did you, why did you start this? What gave you that idea like 265 episodes ago and what benefits have you seen from it? Um, so the, the reason why I started was because like I, I started a video company and I wasn't creating any video myself. So I thought I've got to start creating my own videos because I've got to be able to like talk the talk and walk the walk. Um, so people can know who I am and like that I know what I'm talking about. So it just started away as a, as a way of sort of answering people's questions um, and talking about sort of myths and misconceptions about video and just talking about what kind of cameras to use and how you shoot video yourself. There's like so much I could talk about with video. Um, so it just sort of started as a way of doing that. Um, and the kind of things I've like, I built my business off the back of it really. Mm. Um, so I used to go networking all the time and that was a way sort of, I got a lot of my business, but I haven't been networking. Like I used to go networking sort of three times a week, like in person. And now I probably go once a month, but I post videos like once or twice a week. Um, I probably should, I probably could and should do more, but people know me because of that, because mm. of the videos I post. Like I've built relationships off the back of it. I've got business off the back of it. I turn up at events sometimes and people know, like people have said, ah, oh, you're the guy from the video or you're the guy from LinkedIn. Uh, and then like, that's when you know it's working because it's just like people know you because of the videos. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I'm glad I'm doing that because it's working. It's a bit and, like, it doesn't happen that. overnight. It doesn't happen overnight at all. Like it's, it's, it's years of work. Uh, like to get to, to a, a, like a decent point. I, like, I think you need sort of months of work to see it start working. So I do tell when I, when I'm working with people, I do tell people to commit to sort of six months before they see mm. like some good return on it. Um, but once you start doing it, like it's really, it's really worth doing. So out of interest, one episode, I, I think they're about two to three minutes long that you produce. Uh, how long would that take you to, to actually do from start to finish? So I spend probably half a day. So I plan it. So that takes a little bit of time because mm. um, I come up with a point, like the, the question I want to answer or somebody asked me the question that, that I need to answer. Um, and then I write the points that I want to cover. 
I've, I'm quite lucky to have like this setup here in the studio behind me where I've got the camera, I've got my sofa there. I've like built a little sort of set here in the studio where I can shoot stuff. Um, so that's quite easy to set up because it's already here. The lights are already set up. Um, and then I sort of shoot it. I don't necessarily answer the question all in one go. So I've got two cameras. So if I do screw up, I can cut from one, like one camera to the next. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do answer it all in one go, but that is very, very rare. Um, and then editing probably takes sort of a, a couple of hours afterwards as well. So about half a day for one episode. Okay, great. Uh, so now what I want to do is move into a bit of a, a practical element, which is, is new for Marketing Study Lab. And I'm going to hand over to Mark to take us through something um, of which I know very little about. So yeah, we were going to talk about, are you, are you sharing your screen with me? Yeah, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? Or do I share my screen with you? Let's have yeah. a... Oh, I can share my screen with you. There you go. Brilliant. There you it? go. Okay. So um, last week I'm, well, I did a presentation about like, all sorts of video stuff, but I thought one of the most interesting things was um, testimonials. Mm -hmm. um, and like the way that testimonials work or the way the testimonials used to work for me was that I'd say to someone, Oh, can you make me a video testimonial? And I go, Oh yeah, yeah, great. And then they'd make me a testimonial. But what I'd get back was just sort of gump and like sludge and just sort of, oh, Mark's a great guy. He did a really good job. Um, uh, I'd really recommend him. And that'd be about it. But the way you get like a really decent, good quality video testimonial is by asking very specific questions. Um, and you'll see that when we go through the questions that one very much leads to the next one. So by the end of it, you sort of painted the whole journey from start to finish about how um, how things were before um, and then how things are now and what the process was like and what surprised you. So the first question really easy is um, who are you and where are you based? So that really sets um, the scene as well, of like who they are, where they're based. I'd also ask, uh, what do you do? So you, you can sort of get people um, when they're watching it to include themselves in this. They might also exclude themselves in this. Um, but if you've got enough video testimonials, you're kind of sort of saying, Oh, I help a range of different people uh, in different uh, different capacities. Um, and then, what? So, what were things like before? Um, so, why did they? Uh, what were things like before? So, why did they bring you on board? Um, what what things were going wrong? What kind of problems were they facing? Um, and then, why were they thinking about bringing you on board? So, why why were things so bad that they had to bring you on board? Um, and then why did they choose you in particular? So what things stood out? So did they know you from um, like networking? Did they know you because of the videos or the content you made? Did they uh, find you on Google, something like that? Um, just sort of why they chose you above everybody else to um, like that, that sort of stood out. Mm -hmm. And then what were the results? So what kind of results did they get? How quickly did that happen? Um, then that sort of links in quite well with the next question is what, what surprised you about working with the company? So was there anything that happened that you didn't expect that you were kind of pre pleasantly surprised that did happen? So was the service particularly good? Uh, were they particularly helpful in their aftercare, anything like that? So what kind of things that um, you didn't expect happened as a result of working uh, with, with you? And then how and why would you recommend um, you or this company? Um, it's just a, a really nice sort of way of, sort of tying it up nicely at the end, just to get like a nice little sound bite um, at the end of, of the video. And it's just the whole, all these questions is a really nice way of getting a really good quality video testimonial. And it's much better than just asking, oh, can you make me a video testimonial? It's a lot, you'll get a lot of better, um, a lot better quality video and um, yeah. A recommendation afterwards and then you can use this as a video you can use this as audio content you can repurpose this into sort of written testimonials as well so you can get, take quotes and put them on your website and things like that um and then you can use that on and on and on uh, uh, forever more <laughs> I, I, I like the way you, you've got some stock questions there and then it, it, the, the key one for me is uh, what surprised you about working with the company S yeah. simply because it's it, it, it's something that you, you very rarely think about it's you know it's it well they were offering this and we did this and it's like okay well what what was different what was extra what was special i like that one 
Yeah. I think that's a really good one that makes it stand out a little bit because like now and again, there will be stuff that, that they weren't expecting that happens. Um, that happens as a result. So yeah, as I said, there, like, there might be like, I was really surprised about their level of communication or something like that. So what, what do you do? Cause I think we've all been in, I, I certainly have been in this situation, but what do you do when you're asking these questions and you pretty much get in? Yeah, it's fine. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, I do this a lot. So I travel around interviewing um, like different uh, franchisees and staff for, for, for franchises. So I do that a lot. And when I do get um, people like that, so I, I interview a number of people for it. So for me, it's okay just to get through that and move on to the next person okay. because that person might be particularly nervous or they might just not want to say too much about it. I've had people like point blank refuse to do testimonials because they're so nervous about it. Um, and it might just be because they're nervous. Um, but I do just say, look, it's just a chat. So I might not stick rigidly to those questions. So I might, they might say something in the first question and I might ask them a question about what they've said just to help them relax. So it feels more like a natural conversation. Uh, rather than just sort of a list of questions I've got. So just sort of, you, th- that's sort of like the the basis of it, but feel free to sort of just have a conversation off the back of that and that will help people relax into the yeah. questions. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, it's, it's a massive help if you've almost got a few questions, a few standard questions and a few off-the-cuff questions that can help them relax that they, they might not, like, like the worst thing you can do is, is overthink the questions that are put in front of you and, and then you just almost freeze. Yeah, like um, people come to me and they've already sort of thought through what their answers are and they're like, oh, I must remember what to say. And I just say, totally forget it. We're just going to have a conversation about like, like so they're actually telling the truth about like what happened. So they have to remember yeah. anything. Uh, all I remember is what actually happened. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so, so it, it's my time to answer, to answer, to ask you to answer these quick fire questions if you're ready. Yes. Excellent. Name one must read business book. Uh, Just Listen by Mark Goulston, I put. Yeah, good book. Yeah. Interesting. I haven't heard that one before. What is the last thing you Googled? Oh, God. Um, can I just check that? <laughs> yeah, of course you can. Because <laughs> <laughs> it might have changed. We've got to be factually correct. Ah, there you go. Uh, it was a gen- the general election. So what were the results in the previous general election? <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's, yeah, let's move on too deep. <laughs> Uh, what would be a one tip for people who are studying? Um, get experience in what you want to do. So actually go out and find your own experience. I'm hearing that a lot, a hell of a lot more now than I ever, ever have. Um, what, if you could tell your 10 year old self one thing, what would it be? Does it have to be like business related? No, no, not at all. Put money on Leicester winning the league in 2015, 16. (laughs) That is brilliant. What were three thousand to one? I think they were. Yeah, I just can't put ten on it. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. The, the one of the best answers I've had for that question was uh, don't don't talk to forty year olds because the guy that I was uh, <laughs> asking the question to was forty. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and and finally, most importantly, if people want to find out more about you, what you do, where should they go? Um, so they can find me on LinkedIn. So just search um, Mark Harmon or Mark. Common Redbook Productions, or just go to my website, which is redbookproductions.co.uk, and you know, connect with me there. Brilliant, Mark. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so so much for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me. It's been been good. It's been been uh, been a pleasure. <laughs>